Good evening, I'm Scott Beadle with St. George News at 8. A 17-year-old from St. George was killed Sunday night in a collision on State Route 18. State Trooper Joe Pastor shares the details of that accident. At approximately 8.30 p.m., medical and law enforcement were dispatched to a uh, personal injury accident on SR-18 at the Diamond Valley turnoff. Units arrived on scene and what happened was a newer model Dodge pickup truck was traveling northbound on SR-18 when a smaller passenger car was making a left-hand turn from the Diamond Valley Road to turn southbound on SR-18. That turn was made in front of the Dodge pickup. The Dodge pickup was unable to stop to avoid a collision, uh, T-boned the small passenger car. There was two occupants within the passenger car, a 17-year-old female driver who had severe injury, which resulted in uh, fa a fatality. There was another, we believe, teenage uh, passenger who was uh, out of the vehicle by the time any uh, medical or law enforcement arrived. He was given medical attention by bystanders at the time. There was a 19-year-old male that was driving the Dodge pickup truck. He was restrained, uh, suffered no injuries. Right now, uh, we don't believe speed was a factor. We believe it was a possible failure to yield by the passenger car to the main flow of traffic on SR-18. A life flight was called to respond to the scene due to the mechanism of injuries of the occupants in the passenger car. I don't believe anybody was transported by life flight. I know the passenger of the passenger car was transported by ambulance. It's unknown at this point if the driver and passenger of the small passenger car were wearing any safety equipment. Reports from EMS that was on scene advise that they did not take any seat belts off of any of the people in that car though. Four separate rescue efforts in just 24 hours kept the Washington County search and rescue teams busy. First one happened at 2 p.m. on Saturday. A 27 year old sustained a possible pelvic injury in a motorcycle crash in the Sand Mountain area. He was taken to the hospital. Shortly after, a 66-year-old man crashed his mountain bike on Guacamole Trail, injuring his knee. He was airlifted to a hospital as well. On Saturday evening, rescue teams were dispatched for a man reporting his Suburban was stuck in four inches of mud. He and his mother were rescued unharmed. And shortly after 2 p.m. Sunday, an 11-year-old girl crashed her mountain bike on the Stucky Springs Trail in the Bear Claw Poppy Reserve, fracturing both of her wrists. She was taken to the hospital. George Fest is ringing in a new month this Friday with an April Fool's George celebration with music, fine arts, food, and fun. The monthly installment of the event is Friday, April 7th. Opening the entertainment lineup will be longtime local favorite Josh Larson. A number of other jazz and R&B bands will also take the stage, like Vintage Overdrive and Mr. CP's Jazz Band. Craft beer and wine will be available for those 21 and older. Plus, a new sculpture garden with 26 pieces of art will be installed Saturday morning in historic downtown. It all gets started Friday at 6 p.m. on Main Street. For more information, visit georgestreetfest.com. A lucky lottery player in Littlefield, Arizona hit the $60 million Powerball jackpot in Saturday's drawing. According to the official Powerball website, that ticket has not yet been claimed. The winning ticket was purchased at the Scenic General Store near the state borders of Nevada and Utah. The winning numbers, 9, 32, 36, 44, 65, with a Powerball of 1 and a power play of 3. The winner has the option of taking the guaranteed $60 million jackpot through a 30-year annuity or claim a cash prize of $36.5 million. Bucks. The next Powerball drawing takes place Wednesday with an estimated $40 million up for grabs. Now to I stick's game of politics in Washington. This week marks the beginning of a showdown in the Senate over President Trump's Supreme Court nominee. It's a face-off that could change the rules for lawmakers. Maggie Rooley is in Washington with more. And people that don't want to... The Senate now on the brink of going nuclear. I cannot support this nomination. He will be exactly the kind of justice that America needs. I had concerns about his views. Senate Democrats inch past the magic number needed to filibuster and block the president's nomination of Judge Neil Gorsuch to the Supreme Court. I am not ready to end debate on this issue, so I will be voting against cloture unless we are able, 
as a body to finally sit down and find a way to avoid the nuclear option. Leading progressive groups celebrate what they feel is a victory after Senate Republicans refused to even hold a hearing on former President Obama's pick for the Supreme Court, Merrick Garland. Now Senate Republicans are left with the last ditch option, going nuclear, avoiding the Democrats filibuster by changing Senate rules, making it so that only a majority is needed to end debate and bring the nomination to a vote. The majority leader has promised to use whatever tactic is necessary to get his way to make sure that Donald Trump's nominee is confirmed, even if that means forever damaging the United States Senate. Even many Republicans are hesitant, saying they will fight to get Gorsuch on the bench, but are concerned about triggering the nuclear option. Well, I think the damage done to the Senate is going to be real. Gorsuch has cleared the committee votes, but we expect to see some real drama start to unfold over the next few days as Democrats get their chance to filibuster and the Republicans could blow it all up. Meteorologist Kim Walker has your Southern Utah forecast next. The weather tonight is brought to you by Experimac. Experience Mac computers in a new way. Well, good evening, everyone. It was definitely a dreary day out there. Lots of snow and also some rain in uh, St. George. Tomorrow, we're going to dry things out, mostly sunny. It will be breezy with mild temperatures. And then we are going to stay mainly sunny throughout the week. We are going to see a warming trend. Temperatures will be uh, warming up as we head toward the end of the week. And then we have another little system that will come through, and that will give us a chance for some isolated showers as we head uh, toward the weekend. We'll take a look at that forecast in just a little bit. But by tomorrow, high pressure will start to build in. And so as a result, we're going to see dry conditions all across southwestern uh, Utah. Most of the rain and snow will continue to push off to the east as that area of low pressure continues to move off to the east as well. But uh, it's going to be pretty nice as we head into the next few days. Here's a look at your day planner as we head into uh, Cedar City. Temperatures will start off pretty cold, below freezing, around 26 degrees. Mostly clear conditions, but lots of sunshine during the day. Temperatures will be around 38 degrees by noon climbing into the upper 40s and then dropping down to around 46 degrees, partly sunny skies by 5 o'clock. For St. George, we are expecting, of course, warmer conditions, 41 degrees as we start off the morning, and then 50 degrees by your lunch hour. We climb up into the 60s and then dropping down to around 61 by 5 o'clock with a mostly sunny sky. It's going to be pretty breezy out there as well as we head into tomorrow before high pressure really takes control of our weather. High temperatures across the area. We did see highs in the 40s in Cedar City, but then in the afternoon, we dropped down into the 30s, so we had snow throughout the late afternoon and early evening and rain all across St. George and even a few thunderstorms as well. So it kept us a little bit on the cloudy side for today. Tonight, temperatures will drop down to around 39 degrees in St. George in Mesquite, Nevada. We are expecting temperatures to be around 43 degrees in Cedar City, much colder than that, with lows around 22 degrees. Tomorrow, temperature is very pleasant in Mesquite with a high around 70 degrees. In the lower 60s for St. George and in Cedar City, expect to highs around 48 degrees, so it's going to be a little bit cooler than the rest of us. Here's a look at your seven-day forecast. We are expecting temperatures to gradually warm up, though, nice into the 60s by Wednesday. Mostly cloudy conditions on your Thursday, and then we're going to stay in the 60s for the most part for the end of the week. Maybe a chance for some afternoon showers, but it will be very isolated in nature. A few more showers for your Saturday. Temperatures a little bit cooler this weekend with highs around 55 degrees for Saturday and 49 degrees for Sunday. Your forecast for uh, St. George, we are expecting much warmer conditions. 71 degrees on Wednesday by Thursday, 80 degrees. And from there, we drop back down into the 70s and 60s over the weekend with chances of rain, especially for your Saturday. Maybe just a few more showers on Sunday, but we will remain uh, with highs in the 60s for the most part, so temperatures will be very mild. But we're going to see a little bit of a warmer for the next few days, enjoying the dry weather before the rain get, gets back into the not picture. Not a bad week. No, not at all. Thanks, Kim. All right. Still ahead, from the mat to matrimony, two wrestlers look to tackle a new challenge. Wrestlers John Cena and Nikki Bella finished off their opponents at WrestleMania and decided to take on a new challenge, marriage. Yeah, Cena got down on one knee after the pair defeated The Miz and Mars in a tag team match. 
says he's been waiting so long to propose. Thanks for watching and have a great night.